and some of the you know organics too. So it just every every situation is a little different, but expect the worst. Yeah. Expect the pests to come in at some point because they always find a way in and act preventatively, and you can you can really manage it a lot easier. Yeah, you're good. And then uh, yeah, whenever he gets back, we'll we'll actually dive in deep and talk about all the good stuff. Um, today, you guys are going to be able to walk out each with two sachets of your choice, and these are going to be little predatory mites that you can hang right on your plants right now. Um, nice. They're stuff that we recommend for preventative as well as curative. Um, what ones are they? What I got Swirsky, Ambilosa Swirsky, which is a a generalist predatory mite. It's a little cheaper price point than my other one, Persimilis. Um, Swirsky I use uh, preventatively for thrips, for fungus snap, larva, and for um, and you, just, you just hang it on there? Yep, you're gonna hang it right on the plant, and my goal when I'm hanging it is to put it in a place where I'm not gonna strip, and then it's gonna be like just hanging in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So put it in the canopy, Okay. above your strip point. Oh, okay, okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. when you're, after like you've in, leafed, in the, yeah. it's still gonna be sitting with touching a leaf of some kind. Okay, okay. That's the goal. So we've got Swirsky, and then we've got Persimilis is, um, just for spider mites and this is if you have a problem this is what I recommend I generally will not use this unless there's a spider mite in the building and I'm trying to kill it right now because they're more expensive and they only eat spider mites so it's like this is a, a solution is there anything that you got for the soil yeah for oh, spider yeah. mites um, no just yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah I got oh, two yeah. different two different things um, and we'll, we'll we'll dive in let's get in it man Thank you guys for coming. So today we're gonna be we're gonna be focusing on cannabis, but you know we have other people that are not. So we're gonna talk about all the different ways you can use beneficial insects. Um, we are. I'm Nick Zimmer. Uh, this is Sydney McLean. We are the Plantsmen. We are a new beneficial insect company based here in Michigan. Um, we are like two months from starting, so we're very new. But I've been using beneficial insects for over 15 years. Um, in cannabis as well as in ornamentals. Um, along with doing the plantsman, I own a uh, production and retail garden center in Northville, Michigan, where I use beneficial insects on all the crops that we grow. Um, been doing that for a long time and it's kind of set me into a path of um, working with cannabis growers and setting them up on the same kind of programs. So for the past three years, I've been working right with growers, setting them up and working with them on releasing um, in a commercial scale and just kind of teaching them the ways of what I've learned. <clears throat> Sydney's been working with me for the past couple of years. She worked with me um, at Willow Greenhouse, which is my other company. And then as we started this, she is my general manager. She's the jack of all trades in our company and our social media guru. <laughs> <clears throat> so us, what's different about us, what's unique about our company. Um, we're here to help growers. We're working right with how are you guys doing? Good. Excellent. Come on. We're here. We just started. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Just me. So the goal of our company is really to simplify beneficial. We want to make it easier and more digestible for you guys to understand. We know it can be, it can seem very complicated and it can seem very complex and expensive. So our goal in creating this company was like, how do we break down these walls that get in the way of growers? wanting to use beneficials. And so <clears throat> one thing is we're, we're focusing on education. So it's not like we're just trying to sell you a bug. We want to sell you on the whole plan, the program, you know, from start to finish. Cause it's not, it doesn't work like here's the bugs and we're done. It's a, it's a long-term plan. Um, so that is, you know, our goal, our goal is to get everyone off pesticides. There's just no need, especially when there's a, an honestly a better solution and if you do it the right way, we found that releasing bugs every two to three weeks actually costs less than spraying on a weekly basis and what most growers are finding they need to do. So once you kind of reframe how you're growing and how you're dealing with your IPM or your integrated pest management strategy, you realize that beneficials are cheaper, easier, lower labor, and they're better for you because you don't have to sit in there and spray every week at night or early in the morning I've done it for years. It's how I was trained. I know the pros and I know the cons. Um, so along with you know working with growers, we, we really focus on having a really good product. So we 
have teamed up with an awesome insectary. So they rear all of our bugs for us off-site in New Jersey, and then we ship across the entire country. Um, so that's like the two pieces, customer service and great quality products are kind of what separate us. There's a lot of people in the industry. There's you know Shale Peak, there's Arbico Organics, there's a bunch of different big names, and we're, we're, we're new, we're nimble, and we're ready to do whatever it takes to get the customers the right quality product. <clears throat> so the current problem in the industry is, number one, lack of education. Like, we don't have a good way to get the knowledge we need from somebody. Somebody needs to teach you guys what to do and how to do it, and that's what I'm trying to do. Um, the other problem is the sprays you have access to suck. I mean, that's just kind of the reality of it. They, they work as long as you're really doing them regularly. And, you know, compared to conventional pesticides where you can really, like, destroy the population and start over, we can't use that stuff. So we're, we're stuck in this conundrum of like, all right, we can use crappy products all the time and dump all this money and really not, we're, we're putting a Band-Aid on a bigger problem or we address the problem head on and we use these beneficials and really target it. Come on in, sir, how are you? <laughs> doing really good. Doing really good. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> so again, our goal is utilize what nature's given us. We're gonna, there, there's already a path outside. Once you've used beneficial insects, you'll start to see them in action outside in nature. And like a lot of the bugs we sell, all of them, are naturally occurring predators that you'll find in a Michigan summer outside in July. We're just releasing them ahead of the schedule and inoculating our gardens early so we are ahead of the pest before it shows up, because the pest will show up. <clears throat> I want you guys to stop me with any questions I like to keep this very casual, so just raise your hand or give me a shout if you need anything. <clears throat> so the goal is to teach you guys how to grow a crop with zero pesticides. And these are just a few tips to go by. And a lot of them are like, for most growers are no-brainers, and I don't like, I would assume a lot of people know this already, but you know, number one, setting up some strict sanitation protocols for your grow. So not going outside in your garden, outside, and then walking into your grow with the same shoes and clothes, simple stuff like that. You know, gloves, um, bringing in outside plants or clones or genetics that are from another grower that may have, may not see them, but may have a pest egg or whatever. We wanna set up a strict quarantine process for that. So keep them out of the main room two to three weeks, give them a chance, get any of those eggs to flush out that might be sitting there. Um, do some kind of dunking process, which I really like, whether it's, you mentioned zero tall, but you can, you can mix a few things together. We do nematodes, we do uh, botanigard, which is a beneficial bacteria. Can you quarantine stuff with just bugs and it'll take care of it? Yeah. Yes, I mean, it's not gonna treat for diseases. You know, if it's got PM, that's not Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But okay. yeah, I mean, you can, if it's, what I, here's what I don't like doing, is I don't like dumping bugs in a prop dome. Like if I've got them in a dome in a really high humidity setting, I don't even want to mess with the bugs yet. Because most of these bugs don't like that. They're gonna die. And really like most of the pests don't like that either. You're not gonna find a lot of thrip, a lot of spider mite in a super high humidity setting because they just don't reproduce well at that set point. So that's why I usually recommend your first dosage of beneficials is week one or two of veg as you've come out. And if you know, if it's the quarantine setup where you've got some clones, like keep them in the dome, keep them in a separate area. As soon as they're rooted, put them in a pot and dose them heavy with bugs, and then you know give them another week or so. The goal is when I say two to three weeks, like I said, you could have a plant that shows zero sign of pest, but has a couple eggs that are waiting to hatch of thrip or spider mite, and they maybe dunked it but didn't get everything off or whatever. So giving it that time will let those pests Show emerge, yeah. and then you'll see them, and then you can treat, and you'll kill them with what you're, what you're doing. Okay. Um, so let's see. So prevention is key. You're going to hear me saying this just like over and over, because it's just it's the underlying factor of a quality garden is knowing what to expect and planning accordingly. So prevention is everything. Plan for the worst. It always seems to happen eventually. It's like no one's, no one's immune. Um, release beneficials early in crop cycle and reapply at a two to four week interval. So throwing bugs out is great, but if you're not gonna follow up, then they're gonna die. Like these beneficials only last for two to four weeks. 
So you really, we're, we're continually inoculating. And we're gonna assume there's not enough pest pressure to keep those bugs reproducing, the good ones. So that's why we're gonna have to reapply. I don't want them reproducing. If they do, that means I've got a lot of bad bugs in the building. I got one of my tents at temperature control because I got organics living soil. Yeah. So would they thrive in that and stay alive? Some of them, like the, the soil dwelling mite, the um, stradial laps, this guy, absolutely. And okay. he's, this one can feed on other stuff other than just like fungus gnat larva. Yeah, so yeah. that for the organic gardener, that's a great crop. Okay. And those okay. can like, in your living soil, will reproduce for like Yeah, years. and that's kind of what I was just wanting to get at too. It does, like I, I got two different, I got my salt or my nutrient mix and then like my my personal organics that I'm running right now. Yeah. So. It, it doesn't work with, with all of them. That's okay. one I've found good luck with. Ro rove beetles is another one. I didn't bring them, but they're another bug that you can get to reproduce on site. And what is uh, what is the benefit of, with those? Rogue beetles are going to do the similar um, pests as the uh, soil going like the, the um, stradiolus. Really so they're going to do uh -huh. fungus gnats. They're going to do root aphids. They're going to do any other larval stage. Like thrips live in the soil for part of their life. Mm -hmm. um, so I usually I find this is easier to apply for most growers than rogue beetle. Rogue beetle as far as evenly distributing it within a crop. Okay. Row beetles are bigger bugs, so usually it's like growers are trying to put like a dose per pot or something, and some pots will get 10, some will get none, where this is like, it looks like soil, and you take a tablespoon and you dump it, and it is easier to get a good uniform amount in each scoop. Nice, okay. Uh, let's see what else I got on here. You know a lot about bugs, bro. I've been using them for a little bit. Another thing I, I find people are doing is they're holding their bugs. They're buying a load and then they're putting them in the fridge. And I don't want you guys to do that. I want you to release yeah, upon arrival. That's gonna give you the best result. Now there are some products like nematodes that can sit in the fridge for weeks, four weeks, six weeks, but the best return on your investment is to release those bugs within 24 hours of arrival at your place or when you pick them up. Um, so that should be your, your general rule of thumb. Now yes, you can store them, you can cool them down. Um, but I, I know for a fact that you'll, you'll probably lose some the longer you keep them in the fridge. Yeah, I made a big mistake reproducing ladybugs. <laughs> oh, bro, it was horrible, horrible. I, sh I should have never did that. Yeah. yeah that I don't, we don't sell ladybugs. I mean, they're, I use them in the greenhouse setting sometimes, but for, for cannabis, if they're just too messy. They're stinky, yeah, they, 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 like, they get yeah, everywhere. They reproduce like that. Oh, dude, and, and my thing was I bought one tub and I, I looked it up on YouTube to see how to feed the ladybugs. So I got a big ass frisbee and I put the raisins in the yeah. water. <laughs> Dude, I had like, them up. Oh, bro, man. I had steroid ladybugs. That's awesome. <laughs> I could not believe that. Like, it's a blessing yeah. and a curse. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, my garden was dope, but when I walked in, it smelled like beetles. I was like, oh, <laughs> no, the smell. I, mean, I usually buy them by like the twenty thousand or something. It's just a big bag, and I'll yeah. just throw them yeah. everywhere. And by the time you're done, you just stink. That's, a, that's the reason why I stopped using bugs. Period. I was like, oh my god, this is out of my realm. <laughs> yeah, I'm so stupid. I, uh, I had a problem getting rid of them. I ladybugs are everyone they're easy for people to recognize so like we have it on our website even though we don't sell them but it's a good way to you know conceptualize what they do and it's we can all digest that you know we can see them we can see them eating aphids and they're they're okay um let's see so we talked about spraying but um, a lot of people are like can i spray with beneficials or how do i do both and obviously you need to do some fungicide treatments and you know periodically but one rule of thumb to go by is try to give your bugs two days um, after your last spray before you apply. So you spray, give them two day break, and then apply your bugs. And then following that, give them another five to 10 days after you apply to let them work before you spray on top of them again. Um, you know, a lot of the things that we're allowed to use are compatible with beneficials, but I still, even if it says won't hurt beneficials, I kind of just like spray it right on top of when I apply. You want to give them a chance to walk around and do their job. Um, and then another thing is to just scout. I don't find people scout enough. You got to walk through the crop and really flip some leaves and take a moment. Just take an hour, set it aside as part of your, your normal routine at least once a week. And uh, my soil, yep, flip those leaves. The nets. Yep. Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, I'm spraying that shit right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so indoor versus outdoor. Just 
these are, I'm going to go on some just tips and things to consider when you're using beneficials. Some pros and cons. Um, indoor is great. It's much more predictable. You can, you know what you're applying. You can kind of keep pests out easily. Um, but you have no nature to lean on. So like, it's a sterile system. You're trying to, you're inoculating with whatever you want to be in there at the time. Um, I find it's easier to use beneficials on an indoor setup than an outdoor setup, just as it's it's easier to predict. Um, outdoor, you're going to have naturally a lot more pest pressure just because you're outside in nature, but you're also going to have a bunch of these natural predators that you can tap into. And when I say tap into, I mean you can plant certain plants in your garden that will attract beneficial insects. Brilliant. Plants would be like ornamental peppers, marigolds, alyssum. Those are things that naturally bring in some of these bugs because um, these bugs will feed on their pollen of those particular um, plants. So if you're an outdoor grower, strategically placing some, some um, ornamental black peppers and some marigolds like throughout the garden is a great way and how organic growers will do it in like the vegetable garden, you know? So yeah, I'm gonna need to learn that because I, I had a horrible run this year with my greenhouse because of bugs. And yeah. Just didn't even care for it, so. Yep, no, it's, it's pretty sweet. Greenhouses, uh, you know, they have their own laundry list of challenges and I mean, you're, you gotta manage the heat in there in the summertime. If that gets out of control, your pests are gonna just explode, so it's. Um, let's see. I didn't have much hope for the You didn't? I, I, it's a piece of the puzzle. It's not, it's not a foolproof plan. It doesn't, you know, but it does attract some beneficials. I don't find the deer care about it or rabbits. It doesn't do that part very well, but it does bring in some beneficials, some boreas. Um, there's a few cool bugs that I didn't bring today, um, but that are great for outdoors like boreas. Boreas is a bug? Boreas is a bug, yep. It's like a pirate beetle, I believe. It's a little, it's a little black one. Oh, no. O-R-I-U-S. Yeah, there's a fungicide I get for what's called Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. All right, so um, preventative versus curative. Um, big thing I like to hit home, like good bugs are great, but if you've got a big problem, they're probably not going to give you the solution that you want. You're going to need to, number one, you're going to need to hit them with a, a, a first a spray to knock down that pest to just break it down a little bit and then follow with, some beneficials, but you're going to have a much lower cost if you're doing a preventative program because you're using a lot lower rates. Um, you're always going to be releasing prior to the problem existing. So again, it's a change of mindset. Um, you got to be thinking ahead. Say, all right, I'm expecting to see thrips. I hope I never see one, and I'm going to release this and this, and they're going to keep them at bay. It's like security guards. They let them do the work for you. <clears throat> um, like I've told you a couple of times, keep the tipping point in favor of the good guys. There's this line that you'll find where the pest gets too big, the, the good guys can't keep up. And as soon as you hit that moment, it's like, well shoot, what do I do now? I gotta, you gotta know that and you gotta spray or you gotta follow up. Um, so it's something I like everyone to keep in mind. Stay on a schedule and build it into your production plan. So we're gonna give you guys like our standard operating procedure for beneficials and indoor cannabis. It's just, what my goal is to create a nice tangible chart for you guys. That would be like week one veg, do this, and three weeks later do this, you know, so you can, and it, it will be modified to each person's grow based on their veg time, their pot size, um, cocoa versus organic versus rock wool. But this is like, my goal is to make it more digestible. And I find like with nutrients, you guys have a great, you're, you're able to follow the chart very easily. It's, it's digestible. What about mother rooms? So, I mean, we can treat that like, what I do with mothers is every time I get bugs, they get they get a dose of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, Doesn't matter, I leave a little bit extra. Whenever I get anything, whether I'm sprinkling it right on top, I'm putting it in the soil, I'm hanging a couple sachets. But usually like when you're buying quantities, it's rare that the quantity is gonna be the exact perfect amount. So you're either gonna have some extra or whatever, and you're going to need to use it up somewhere. So, or you got to make a stretch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, that's the game: is getting to know the quantities and what your garden will take. The beauty is, there's no such thing as an overdose on beneficial bugs. So, like, the worst case scenario is you have too much and you put them out, and that's you know they work. That's it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Let's see. So, I also like curative. There's certain 
bugs that are better at that fighting problems than others. Like I was talking about Persimilus versus Swirsky, the two predatory mites. Persimilus is like a crazy feeder. It's like voracious. It just wants to eat spider mites now. And if there are none, it's going to die. And then Swirsky is like, oh, I'll just eat whatever's around. Spider mites here, thrips here, whatever. And so pick the one that's going to be the more aggressive feeder <laughs> in that moment. All right, let's talk about bugs, bad bugs. And these are some of the uh, foliage damaging, damaging ones that I wanted to bring up. We got aphids, spider mites, white flies. I don't see as much in cannabis, but they do pop up from time to time, and thrips. And really, it's like these three are my main fighting problems in indoor cannabis. And even in a greenhouse setting, they're just like the nuisances. But they're all very treatable. And spider mites, you know, they love hot, dry conditions. So when you get into that flower stage and things are starting to dry down, you're, you're dropping your humidity, that's when you'll see them start to peak up. And you generally won't see a big issue in your veg or your prop because they hate it. They hate high humidity. They can't reproduce well. So that's generally why you'll see they pick up in the flower stage. You won't even notice it in veg, but they might be there. Um, thrips are a pain in the butt. They have multiple stages of their life that are in different places on the plant. Part of it, they're living in the soil. Part of it, they're eating the new little leaves coming off the tip. Part of it, they're living on older leaves. So it's like trying to treat them can be a challenge and getting ahead of them is important. Um, but they're gonna, they're gonna feed on the actively new little growth. You'll see kind of your leaves starting to come out looking twisted and looking kind of mottled because they like to eat it when they're just opening. And then when, as that leaf opens up, it looks all distorted. Um, Dang, I thought those were mutant plants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Thrips will also... I love mutants, though. Thrips can carry viruses around with them, which sucks. So if you've got any kind of viroid going around, like, they'll eat and then spit it out into the next spot. And so, it, you know, if you've got a bad thrip problem, you can be spreading a bunch of shit around your garden. It's not fun. Aphids Jeez. are, I feel like, the easiest to treat for just because, like, most sprays will really knock them down to start with. Plus... The, the beneficials are really good. There's lace wings and there's parasitic wasps. The thing that suck about aphids is they don't need a partner to reproduce. They can just spit out babies forever. They're like, yeah, they don't. Godzilla. They just, exactly. Uh. So, yeah, that just probably just spit right out of them. Uh. <laughs> so, they can become a problem if not babies already. You're like generally going to see them on the underside of the leaves in big colonies. And uh, so... Keep an eye out for them. I don't see them as much on a good sanitation indoor grow. It's usually these two, is where I. But I've been seeing them pop up from time to time, and it's smart to have something in your tool belt. I treat these like once throughout a crop cycle. I treat these like two to three times throughout a crop cycle. <clears throat> uh, white flies. These guys, you're going to see on the underside of the leaf. They're a pain in the butt. Um, you'll see them kind of scatter around when you touch a leaf. They're just they're a little bitch. I don't like them at all. Um, you'll whatever you use on beneficials wise, we usually only attack the adults, so it'll take a little time to flush out the eggs that need to hatch and all that good stuff. All right, uh, soil dwelling pests. We've got beetle larva. We've got thrip larva. We've got fungus gnat larva. We've got root aphids all unpleasant animals that we get to deal with. Um, Shoot, man, you itch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's awful, I hate those. Um, you know, nothing but horror bugs. stories, but you know, there are good beneficials like the um, predatory mite that lives in the soil and that rogue beetle are great tools to combat that. Same with the nematodes, those are great for treating those. The beetle larva, not as big of an issue, more for outdoor growers. Um, I've had some big grows have some click beetles and some other random beetles come in and bore holes right into the cannabis plant and like they just plants are just on their side the next day so nematodes are a great tool to treat a lot of these things and that's one of the products we brought are the nematodes today um, and yeah so usually can wipe out the majority of all these just with nematodes okay so can you use the nematodes like yeah, oh yeah, yep, those are totally compatible. And they're like, yep, absolutely. None of these bugs will eat each other. Oh, yeah, okay. yep. All right, so I'm gonna briefly just talk about some of our beneficial insects. 
how we use them. I don't expect you to read or like retain any of this information, but we at least do we have could, catalogs. Um, yeah. If you want to take pictures or look at it at the end. Yeah, we've got a really nice website where you can see all the stuff. I just pulled stuff from our website. Um, and easy to digest, easy to read through. Um, but I, the first page here has got a lot of the different predatory mites. And I have a little microscope on the other side that you guys can look through on the way out and see some of these. They're, the predatory mites are very hard to see with the naked eye. You're gonna need a microscope. Um, you're generally, I mean, you're getting 25,000 in a tube like this. So there's you know, a lot in a small amount of space. We got Swirsky up here. Like I was telling you, mainly for thrips and spider mites are its target. Um, it's going to live on the foliage of the plant, so we would sprinkle it on the foliage or we'd hang a sachet, which are these guys, on the plant. Um, when I say sachet, this is what I mean. It's basically just a little pouch, and this pouch has a couple little holes on it on the front and back where the little predatory mites can crawl in and out of. The benefit of this is the lifespan. This, this gives them a little home base to reproduce in. So instead of getting a one to two week return, you get a three to four week return. So that's why we like these. We use them in flower. You hang them right on the plant. They're super easy to apply. You get 250 mites in a sachet. And I've got some dumped out. It looks like sawdust. I mean, uh, you'll, you'll see it over here, but every product has what's called a carrier. And a carrier is just a way to suspend that animal in the tube. Um, and each product has a different type of carrier. Some of them look like sawdust. Some of them look like oatmeal. Some of them look like soil. Um, but you will just apply that as one thing. You won't like be looking for bugs and you just apply it as a scoop. Um, so you'll see like for this guy, you can get it as a tube, as a bag, or as a sachet. Um, same with the Swirsky. This is for sim or sorry, for similis. Um, we've got a couple different sachet forms and then it also comes as a tube. Um, Stradiolalaps, this is that soil dwelling mite. This is what I have right here. And this is gonna target the larval stages of all those bugs that we discussed. I love this thing. I use it twice throughout a crop cycle. I don't have any fungus gnats. I don't have any thrips. It's great. It's super cheap too, which is why I like it. And you'll be able to purchase these guys. We've got them here. Um, we're gonna do a giveaway of a nematode and one of these um, for each of the classes today. So you guys can either purchase or you'll win one either way. Um, let's see who else we got. We've got Californicus. Californicus and Swirsky are kind of interchangeable. Um, Californicus is a little better at eating spider mites. And the reason I like it for us is that I can only sell these in 250 in a box of sachets, and this one I can get in 100. So for a smaller grower that doesn't want 250 sachets at a time, I'll recommend the Californicus just because I can get it in a smaller quantity. Um, any questions on these bugs? They're all weird, they're cool, they won't bite you, they won't crawl on your skin. <laughs> I've released millions of them, and like I've never had any negative situation. So people look at them like, oh my god, this is disgusting. <laughs> Better than, than having thrips and spider mites all over your body. For sure. These smaller, and you'll see them on this microscope, mm -hmm. they're like, you could, you could barely see, see the speck moving. By with the naked eye. Um, on, you see a clump of them? on the next slide, the next bugs are a little bigger. And I have, I brought some lace wings, but a gentleman bought them this morning before the <laughs> workshop even started. So um, <laughs> I don't have, I, we might be able to spot one over there. All right, so on this page, we've got the rope beetle. Rope beetle. Um, this thing is a great soil dwelling animal. It just devours all different kinds of bugs that live in the soil, thrips people, fungus gnat. Uh, let's see, lace wings. So what I sold the gentleman this morning is a lace wing larva. What you see in this picture is a lace wing adult. Um, and then the adult stage, they don't eat the pests, but they fly around. In the larval stage, they look like a little alligator is what I think they look like. But they, uh, they just devour aphids. They're, they're generously aphids, thrips, spider mites, whatever's around. Um, and then they just die off from yeah. From there. So all these all these beneficials, if there's not enough pests, they're gonna die. And so we assume that. That's why we're reapplying on this three to four week interval. Because yeah, we we assume they're not gonna have enough. If you're doing it preventatively, you're never gonna have enough pest pressure, ideally, to, for them to reproduce. Now, in some settings, like he's got a living soil going, he might be able to have enough 
organisms in there for this to oh, eat yeah. that's not the pest. Because um, some of them are generalists and they can eat other things. <clears throat> um, so then we got nematodes up here. You can watch my soil move. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sexy. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of different nematodes. There's three different nematodes we sell. The main one I recommend is the Steinemera felicia, and it's specific for fungus gnats and thrips and root aphids. Um, and for us, I'm going to get in the next slide, we talk about we've got a brand new version of it, which is super cool for you guys. Um, and I'll break into that in a minute. This is another bug that I love. This is for aphids. This is a parasitic wasp. It's about the size of a fruit fly, and they're just super cool. They fly around. You release them as an egg. They hatch. They fly around your place. They look for aphids. They find them. They lay their eggs inside the aphid body as it's alive. The egg then matures. The baby hatches inside, eats its way out, pokes a little hole through the back, and, and emerges. And <laughs> like it's so super aliens. creepy and cool. <laughs> but what you see is, you'll see what they call mummies. So when you, if you have aphids and you have a parasitic wasp, you'll be left with all these mummies, which is like a, a dead Shell aphid board. with a hole in the butt. That aphid carcass. And so, like exactly. It's super creepy, but it's super <laughs> cool, and they work super awesome. So I love these guys. It's I a like weird thing to watch. It is. Gonna, it's like a fetish almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We like to use these preventatively. They're not a quick answer. So again, you want to get them out early and let them do their work. And hopefully there's no aphids and they just die off. But they're, they're, the way that their cycling works, it's like a two week turnaround. So you're going to, that aphid population could build up too much. So it's not a quick fix. I like to remind people of that. <clears throat> we have a uh, internet question yes, here. Sir. Someone asked, what size microscope can you see a nematode on? Ooh, that's a great question. And I actually don't know the true answer to that. It's going to be really powerful, like probably 1,000, you know, because um, they are super tiny. They would, not, they would not show up on my scope, which is 100. So I, I'll have to do some digging. That's a great question, and I will find the answer to that. Sweet. So, new product. This is exciting for us because we're the only company Thank you that's for that. doing this right now. We're doing these nematode capsules. So that's what's in this little pack. And in here is a little bag with 200 little capsules. And in the capsules are nematodes. And you would do approximately 8 to 10 capsules per gallon of growing media. So depending on what size your finishing pot is, um, you will use that many capsules. These, these capsules will slowly dissolve as you water and feed nematodes out. So it's a slow drip. Instead of like, normally you get nematodes, you mix them with water, you drench your plants, and they're active for five to seven days if you're lucky. Um, and then you reapply. This one, you apply at transplant or as a top dress, and it will slowly dissolve. I don't recommend it for rock wool. I recommend just doing the standard nematode for rock wool. Um, but these are awesome because you don't, it's, you can take a step out. For me, it's like I do it right at transplanting veg. I'll have my little hole ready for my plug to go in and I'll stick 10 capsules right in the hole and put the plant right on top of it. And then when I transplant from veg into my final, I'll do the same thing and just double it because I'm usually going with a little more valium soil. So will that be an issue like if I do, because I use the Michael Jordan, you know, from my, take them out of my cloner. Yeah. So I do like the slurry tech. I dunk my roots in there and then I stick them in there. Will that that's happen? No, I should have. I mean, that stuff's not going to have any effect on the nematodes. They're all symbiotic okay. relationships going on. But yeah, no, you can you can dunk it right in that fungi and stick it right on top of the nematodes, and yeah. you got a nice little ecosystem yeah. going right there. Okay, sweet. Yep. So super excited. Like I said, not for rock wool, but for everybody else, three to four week uh, turnaround. I love these because you can store them in the fridge. Um, so four to six weeks in the fridge. And I also like them because they come in a small quantity. So this is 200 capsules, treats like, you know, 10 plants or so, depending on the size that you're doing. And again, these will treat for fungus gnats, thrip larvae, and root aphids. So very cool, very exciting. What kind of shelf life do the capsules have? In the fridge, four to six weeks. Um, after you open them, just seal them back up in another bag that's closed. This is going to give you the. This is the longest time you can store one of our products. You know, um, so very exciting, 
and we think it's going to be a game changer for the industry just because it's easy and most people don't realize with nematodes like you get it we brought some let me see <clears throat> you know you get it in this pouch it kind of looks like snot or like i don't know it's just gross it looks gross you mix this with water it's like moon sand. yep you mix it with water the ideal method is get your thing get a maybe a couple gallons of room temperature water, you put this whole thing in there and make like a concentrate and let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes. And then from there, you'll mix that into your big tank, whether you're doing like a 55 gallon or however you do it. Um, but you wanna make sure you let them get a chance to get up to room temperature before you apply them. And I think that's a step that I had missed for many years and didn't realize I was like, just wasting my money on nematodes and not doing it the right way. And I found such a better result from doing that one little step. So yeah, like is that uh, that mixture there? Uh, do you have to separate it when you're pouring? Because I used that OG BioWar before, and no, you, you want to make sure separate the talic or whatever is. When you're using this stuff, you want to make sure you're taking all your filters off. You want to you want every bit of it, and really, it'll dissolve very homogeneously into your water. It okay. won't you won't feel like you've got a bunch of like stuff swirling around. Right <clears throat> Those can't go through like a pump, can they? They can. I mean, I. I try not to put them through my dosatron. Yeah. Um, where I'll just get a 55 gallon, put a just a standalone Eco Plus or something yep. in there, and and just plug that in and, and water with that. Oh, with the um, wand. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. As a as a drench. I mean, there's no right and wrong way to do it. Okay. And it, if if you have to do it through the dosatron, you definitely can, and I have. You just want to get as many screen points off where they can get I stuck. Filters, yeah. Yep. Just get microscopic, you know. They're gonna go through a pump. I would sure think. Yeah, they should. You might have a very small. Pump. Exactly. No, I've had good. I mean, I use them at the greenhouse. I spray them. I put them in my MSO sprayer, my dram sprayer, and I spray my whole facility, the floors, the plants. Because most people don't realize nematodes. You can spray on the foliage, and they have a great response on bugs on the foliage. So when I'm using them, I'm not only doing a drench, but I'm doing like a sprench, where it's like somewhere in between, where the, I get it all over the leaves. I get it all over the soil and uh, everything's covered. Another thing is that nematodes hate sunlight. So if you're using them, you know, dropping your lights down or turning them off or doing it in the morning or on a cloudy day are tools that help significantly get efficacy on them. <clears throat> all right, so this is an example of, I do this for growers. I'll, you know, they'll tell me their parameters. Like, all right, I'm growing a thousand plants at three week intervals. I've got this many flower rooms. And so I'll set up what I call like an action plan or an SOP for their facility. And it basically is like a feeding chart. You know, I've got my, my veg in green. I've got my flower in red. I've got my products down here. So we got Swirsky as a loose form where I'm going to sprinkle it. We've got Swirsky as a sachet, <clears throat> which we would hang. We have Stradio Laylaps, which is our soil dwelling mite. We've got Aphidius matricaceae, which is that parasitic wasp. And we've got the nematodes. So week two of veg, I'm recommending applying the Swirsky loose. So that's gonna be your foliage. Um, you're gonna sprinkle it right on the foliage of your plants. You're gonna accompany that with a nematode drench. <clears throat> so you're gonna inoculate that soil with those nematodes. You're gonna have a three week break. So week five of veg, and again, Depending on how long you veg for, this would totally be modified. And if you're doing a short veg, you know, you might just hit them hard right as they're coming out. Um, and then again, right as they're going into flower, and it's two applications instead of three. Um, so week five of veg, I've got them using, I'm doing another dose of Swirsky. I've got the soil dwelling mite that I'm going to apply to the uh, soil as like a tablespoon. I've got... Uh, Aphid Aphidius matricaceae, that's the parasitic wasp that we're going to release in the room and they're going to fly around. And then I've got a nematode drench again. So three weeks after that, we got week two of flower. I'm releasing a Swirsky sachet, so that's I'm going to hang right up in the foliage of the plant, week two of flower. Um, and I'm also going to hit them with another dose of the soil going light. Generally speaking, unless I have a facility that has active pressure or isn't very strict on sanitation, that usually is my last application. So week two of flower is usually when I'm done. Now, depending on the grower, sometimes I'll throw one more sachet application, week five of flower, and then I'm totally done. So um, this last one I'll give you 
control in through the end. It'll give you another four weeks. And we're assuming when you harvest, your, your beneficials are all dead. That's what we're expecting. And you know, if you release on this kind of schedule, that's what you're gonna have. So does that kind of make sense to you guys? Yeah. How many <coughs> plants or like a, a, you know, square footage area would like a one sash cover? Like so a sachet, roughly two to four square feet. Okay. I mean, I'm, I usually just do one per plant, but again, right. it just depends if it's a seven gallon pot, I might do two. If cool. it's a two gallon pot, I still would probably just do one. Sweet. Uh, um, I got 120 in the five by nine, one gallon pots. Yeah. You know, for your setting, you can just go square footage, probably. Watch yeah, I, exactly. I'd probably go one every two square feet or something like yeah. that. That I mean, so you're not wasting money, but yeah, that would be fair. No, I lied. I, I, I lied. 88. Too. I got 88. I'm sorry. <laughs> and and I'm just counting. I got a bunch too. of shit it's all, all good, over. Man. So. All right. Um, let me see if there's any specifics here. Um, so straight eagle laylaps. That's this guy. Again, this is gonna be the soil dwelling mite. We can look at them all up close. It looks like soil. When you get it so um oh, i do about in a, a five gallon pot i'm doing about a tablespoon in a two gallon pot i'm doing about a teaspoon and i'm just taking that and i'm putting it right on a mound right on the soil surface i try not to put it if i've got emitters like not right where it's just going to get annihilated by one of my emitters so a little offset <clears throat> the uh swirsky loose you just sprinkle it it looks like you're sprinkling sawdust on top of your plants and that's okay It'll go away, the, the fans will blow it off eventually. It doesn't have any negative impact. It won't make you fail a test. Um, so we do the, the loose stuff in the veg, and then as we get in the flower, we kind of hit the sachets hard. The nematodes, you, you do a couple drenches. Everything is dependent on a facility and the pressure and the grower and all that good stuff. So this is a, this is a baseline. I don't want you to think that this is like the one and only. This is just a, a baseline for you guys to get some perspective from. And if you ever want help trying to come up with a program, just holler and I will happily, you give me your parameters. I got this many plants and this much space. And then I'll tell you, okay, do this, this, this. And again, I want it to be easy, digestible, successful. If I were to get on this, this type of schedule, will it eliminate my sprays? It should. I mean, because I've been using sprays, sprays yes. for preventatives for years already, you know, so it's not like... It's a great question. That's what I want you to do. Yeah. I only, when I was IPM coordinator facility, I was only spraying fungicides. I was never doing, I never, I never did any uh, insecticidal sprays, even the soft stuff. I mean, because if you're, you, you're taking the place, I mean, that's the goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what I was trying to say. Like I've been fighting it for so long. So if I end up running this, you just gotta go there's heavy. really, really not too much to use already because I've been fighting it for so long, yeah. right? The key is going in early and heavy and don't stop until you, you know, until like week three to four of flower and, and then you should be, okay. nothing bad can happen from there. All right. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it, that's the goal and, and it actually costs less. I mean, we're, we're trying to do some case studies where it's like, let's do the math. Let's add it all up. How much time did you spend spraying this past month? Not How much time did you spend mixing new You know, it's a... Uh, it's it's real. It's like it's not just me trying to sell you on some stuff. I've done it both ways, and plus, I just love not spraying. It's just <laughs> a great thing. And I got little kids. Like I love that my kids can run through the garden without right. having to worry about it. You know. And I'm trained as a spray. Put the gas mask on. Put the full suit on. Can't go in the greenhouse for 24 hours. You know. Like there's some nasty shit that you can spray that really kills bugs, but will <laughs> kill you too. Yeah. So. This is just a better way for everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Those ones don't get so on our website, we do have a cool little tool that we made. It's our bug calculator. So you can punch in your square footage and what bug you're trying to use, and it'll spit out like a recommended rate. You can always hit us up if you want to do that, if you need any That's help sweet. beyond that. Again, our goal is like, how can we make it easy for you? What are the things that we can do to make it easy? <clears throat> um, let me see this. Yeah, so it's uh, plantsmansgroup.com. You're gonna, we're gonna give you guys um, a fly, like our pamphlet, which is what we send out directly to like commercial growers. <clears throat> but it's got just everything I've talked about in a nice little handout. Um, it's also got like a QR code where you can just take a picture of that and it'll take you right to the website. You're also gonna, uh, let's see, did it work? No, it didn't work. Never mind. So we're not going to work. I don't have. I'm not connected. Oh. That's okay. Um, 
So yeah, website, easy to navigate. There's a phone number you guys can call anytime and we actually answer the phone and yeah. tell you what to do. And that's what we found is like, I've worked with every beneficial insect company in the industry. Copert, and BioVest, and BioBee, and BioLine, and GLP, and all these guys. And it's like, all I want is some customer service. Mm -hmm. That's all I want. Just tell me what to do and answer the phone because I have a problem today, you know? So that's where we're focusing on standing out from the pack. And um, like I said, we're brand new and we can do whatever we want. That's what I love about our company is we're not, we're not one of these big guys. We're not stuck in this box of like, I have to do this and I have to have this messaging and I can't go to the organic cup and film the whole thing. You know, it's like, we want to create the vibe that we are a grower and we're here to help you guys and that's what we are. So I hope today was helpful, insightful. Um, we're going to give you guys, like I said, you can each take a couple of sachets. Just take two of your choice for Simulus or Swirsky. Hang them right in your plants. Um, we're going to do a pick here in a minute. Do just like a random. Oh, nice. Do it then. We're ready. Well, you can do yeah, questions yeah, yeah. first. Fire with all the questions. So, um, in regards, okay, I have three different things. Yeah. So, in regards, in the summer, the, the cabbage worms, I told you I was doing the first side. Yep. What, what else could I do besides that? So, for the worms, let me grab my chart here. We've got the. So, for I all your, your caterpillars. Okay, thank you. Your best product is going to be the um, nematode called Steinomera carposa, um, which I actually have some here. It's like I said, there's three different um, types of nematodes, and that specific one. Mm -hmm. And if you want to like, it's this one right Picture. here. Yep, okay. that's specific for that type of bug: um, caterpillars, loopers, all that good stuff. Okay, and then the other thing that we have going on is the Japanese beetles in our vineyard. Yeah. Um, same deal. I believe it's that same one. Okay. I'll tell you right now, Japanese beetles are a pain in the butt. And yeah. like, I don't think there's any 100% solution. I use the traps. I use these. I use whatever I can. I still have problems. So I don't want you to think that I'm going to totally solve your problem yeah. with using that. This is a tool that would be a preventative maintenance that you would apply early, mm -hmm. assuming they're going to come. And it would treat the larval stage. Oh, okay. So you would treat it as a drench. And then um, the last thing, um, so the bugs that attack my roses mostly, are they spider mites, do you think? That little roses little generally, it's like, it's usually Japanese beetles. That's their favorite plant. And it's aphids, beetles, and uh, caterpillars that aphids generally. Yeah. Aphids, I see all of them, the flower buds themselves, yeah. they just suck all the juice right out of that nice flower bud. Um, the Japanese beetle I see on the underside of the foliage mm -hmm. will be eating large holes. So if you're seeing big, chunky sized holes, it's likely done Small. smaller than it could be a, a looper or a caterpillar. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, roses are a pain. They're beautiful. I grow a lot of them, but they, you should just expect to get all of those things every year. And that's one of those plants that, you know, I hate pesticides, but like a three-in-one rose care when you apply it to the soil, is like almost worth it on that. You know, where it's like, it, it treats internally. Right. That's, that's one of those, that's one of those plants where that's what I recommend. And I don't recommend it often. So I, I almost never say the word systemic, but that is, yeah. you know, you just can't avoid it. And it doesn't relate to you guys. We've never used systemics in mm -hmm. cannabis, but um, it's a great question. I hate Japanese people. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. I, guess, I, I just recently brought in like uh, 30 house plants outside yeah. summertime. Is there something I can put on now, like as a preventative to keep me from uh, yeah. infesting my house this morning? For sure. I mean, all the things that we just listed are, you're going to have the same pest potential from those guys. I mean, it's usually going to be some spider mites and definitely some fungus gnats that you're going to be bringing in. So I would treat for those two specifically. So, and if, I mean, do a scout. I don't want you to like waste money, but definitely do a nematode drench or do the, um, the soil dwelling mite, the stradial laps. But, um, you know, also do a nice thorough spray, like an Azagard or something as you're bringing them in. I, the two weeks before I bring houseplants in, I do like a couple sprays just to knock off whatever I can. Um, and then I'll follow it up with like a good nematode drench or some of these. I always have some bugs lying around, so I'll just 
I'm a bug guy, so I just sprinkle it on there. Mm -hmm. um, for him, I was talking about like, you know, for house plants, anything from uh, a pyrethrum based product is really nice. You know, those give you a really good knockdown and they don't have a long residual. Um, or an azagard, which is a neat, um, uh, as a de as a bacterium derived, so it's neem oil based. Um, those are both good, you know, clean my plant up before I bring it in the house kind of deal. Pyrethrum kills, neem oil kind of prevents. Um, or so I, if I've got some pests, I usually I like Pyganic is a nice product. It really does a good job of cleaning them up, and it won't like hurt a beneficial that I released, you know, five days later. So great question. Does anyone have any other questions for me? Yes, sir. Uh, what got you into bugs? What got me into bugs? You know, like I said, I'm a, I'm a conventional grower. I have a degree in horticulture. I was a grower for, for years at large commercial greenhouses, sprayed for years. Like I was telling you, you know, it was my weekly routine is come in at night on Friday night, throw on the gas mask, throw on the full Tyvek suit, go hit all the houses, blast them with Abbott, blast them with whatever I had. And that was like in floriculture, that's just the normal. That's just, Crazy. so I, when I bought Willow Greenhouse, I was like, forget this, I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And I had, had dabbled with beneficials and was like, screw it, this is gonna be my thing. And it's what sets me apart in that industry right. is I'm one of the few greenhouse garden centers that is pesticide free. And um, so it's, it's a fun way for me to differ, differentiate. And like I said, I got little kids. I got two, I got a five and a seven year old. I don't want them they love digging, they love eating, the, you know, like, <laughs> they're kids, so I want them to go be able to be kids in my greenhouse and dig in the dirt and not worry, yeah, about, not worry about it. Never worry about it. It's so much better. And it's cool, and the customers like it. I get big loads of bugs, and I just <laughs> throw them in the air, and, like, so it's become a, a fun thing. And I'm just, like, a, I'm a nerd. I love plants, and I love bugs, and I think they're really <laughs> interesting, so it's just a kind of double whammy for me. But that's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> cool. Uh, do you want to do the giveaway? Any last question? Any last <laughs> question? Coming right <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do it right now. Okay. So yeah. I have like the wheel fortune type of thing going on here. Yeah. Tap and then you guys can pick whether you get nematodes or you want some of the stradial laylaps. I just need some shit for the fungus, dude. Yeah. Well, those are both, they're both going to help you, so uh, okay. either way. Um, you got it back there. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. We're winning the lottery. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> the bug lottery. So, yeah, you can take a, a pack of 200 capsule nematodes, or you can get 10,000 stradiole laps. Both are going to be for your soil. Both are awesome. And also with nematodes and the magnifying glass. Ooh, and the magnifying glass. Ooh, Ooh double now, win. Our, double win. These are for our big baller. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like spider mites from on me. No. no. <laughs> Thank you for participating. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> and then, like I said, you guys are, you know, we're setting up a relationship with Toledo. So if you guys want to buy smaller quantities and get them uh, anytime from here, we'll, they'll have them available. Um, for sure. We've got a lot of them available for you to purchase today. So if you guys want any of the stuff, there's price points. And it's my it's home store anyway. All so the other place I shot. The so I believe it's, what, was it 40, 41, I think, on this one and 40 on the other one? Yeah, I wrote it down. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And how much does it cost for those little packets that you said? Uh, so $1.99. Okay. three forty nine. So a little more expensive on the curative for similis. Um, Which is the one that was from Natch, you said that yellow pack. So the, the Swirsky is gonna help with the fungus gnat larval stage. Yeah. Um, this is gonna be part of your puzzle for fungus gnats. You're really gonna be, for you, I want you to Hi, be boss. focused on this guy and okay. nematodes. That's you're gonna be your bread and butter for uh, your main pressure right now. And then you should be just, you should have these on your flowering plants always yeah, as part of your just routine. I have tea drops, you know what I'm saying? I use this shit faithfully, so. Yep. Cool. Yes, sir. Where are you based? So I'm out of Northville, Michigan, which is about 20 minutes outside sure. of uh, Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's exactly an hour. So. Yeah, we're, we're not far. Um, we're set, we're gonna hopefully set up somewhat of a warehouse scenario where we can have bugs on site. Right now, 
Our bugs are grown out in New Jersey and then shipped out. So eventually, as we grow our client base, we'll have like a place that you can come shop. But for right now, you either get it from Toledo, you can buy it from our website. Either way, it works. Um, but like I said, we're here to help. We want you to succeed. That's like the main message I want you to know. You know? So if you use the, the canisters for houseplants, how far does that go? Like how oh, that would go plant? very far. So again, I want you to think about it in like a tablespoon or teaspoon. Yeah. So on your average houseplant that's maybe in a 10 or 12 inch pot, you're going to use a tablespoon. And, and, just, and then you'll just downsize a little bit. And then what I want you to do is use it all up. So when you get it, I don't care if I just told you to put a tablespoon. When you get through all your plants and you still got half a jar, go back and double down. You know? <laughs> so can I use it? Sounds like Vegas. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's great for any meal. How much do you use for a two and a half gallon pot? Two and a half gallon pot, I do about two teaspoons. Yep. Easy product. You know, anytime you get your bugs, another thing to just note, you get your bugs, you know, um, do some rotating, try to get them to disperse around. So sometimes they'll colonize on the top or the bottom. So doing a little shake, um, opening up, you know, banging it around a little bit is always a good idea. And whenever I get bugs in, I always check for viability. So like you get your bugs in, they should be moving around. Mm -hmm. So open them up, grab your little magnifying glass, look around. Nematodes, you can't tell, but I was everything say, else. Yeah, uh, that's the one problem that I've had. Yeah, cool. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll get some of these little. Um, mites up on this right here so you guys can see what they actually look like. I'll see if I can find the lace wing. You can come grab your two sachets. Yeah, come grab your sachets. Grab anything you want. There's we've got our informational catalog. We've got some lighters. You guys can use lighters. You guys are awesome, man. Thank we've got you guys. We got this is awesome. All the good stuff. Appreciate you guys taking the time. And who says about. they don't like bugs? You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Right, right? Uh, I would kind of do one or the other. I don't think you have to do one Wow. We had a fully packed class here today. Um, next class is at 1.30 today. So you didn't miss it. There's still another class here. So 1.30 uh, in another hour. We're going to take a quick break here and... Uh, yeah, guys, thank you for tuning in today and learning about bugs. Um, the Plantsman's group, they actually came up here today and uh, they showed out. So um, this is uh, halfway done here. So uh, you can still check it out here one hour. So uh, thank the Plantsman's group. Big shout out. Plantsmangroup.com. All right, see you guys in an hour.